Welcome back. I'd like to go over some of the additional skills you'll need in SolarWorks to be successful. And one of those is going to be the fillet. The fillet, um, of course, is a rounded edge. So for instance, if I want to make this edge round, click here and it automatically is rounded. How did I do that? Well, let's do it again. If I click the fillet button, it automatically allows me to select items to fill it. And I can choose whatever I want. Notice the preview went away, and that's because the radius is too large. Um, a radius cannot exist um, with those conditions. So what I can do is respecify it down here, and I'll say 0 0.1. And I can continue choosing whichever edges I would like to be rounded. Of course, rounding an edge has all kinds of benefits in engineering. It uses, as you can see, less material, which means that your uh, finished product will be lighter weight. It can often strengthen an edge due to there being no stress concentration on that curve. It can help with thermal robustness where you won't get heat trapped in a sharp edge. So fillets are extremely useful for a multitude of reasons. And the beautiful thing is, I can keep on selecting edges, and SolidWorks can automatically fillet them for me. So the fillet is as simple as selecting the edges you want to have a fillet on, and giving a dimensional characteristic, specifying a dimension. Likewise, if I choose this drop-down menu, a chamfer is also an option. Like a fillet, it simply bridges the gap with a straight line instead of a curve. So if I choose a chamfer of 0 0.1, I can specify a 45 degree angle or a 60 degree angle or a 30 degree angle whatever I like, and a distance. And notice the chamfer automatically goes all the way around. Since, since the edge that I have selected is a continuous edge. And there is a chamfer. Some engineers call it chamfer. Both ways of saying it are correct. If I have a part that I want to add holes on, particularly threaded holes, it can be very laborious to produce threads in SolidWorks, but there is a solution, the hole wizard. And in my practice of doing SolidWorks, let's say I wanted to add a threaded hole right here for some reason. Maybe the tape holder would have some something that screws in on top. Well, I start a sketch before going to the hole wizard, and I'll put a hole in the center of that rectangle. And to do that, I specify where I want the center of my hole with a point right here. You can see that when I put a point down, it's just a little spot that specifies one infinitely small space. Now if I hit rebuild, I can go to hole wizard And it gives me all types of holes, a counter bore, a slot, countersink, taper tap, a simple hole, a straight tap. Most of the time I end up using a counter bore or a straight tap, but you should know your application. I'll choose a straight tap. It gives me certain units. I'll stay with ANSI inch. Bottoming tapped hole is fine and it gives me all sorts of diameters and thread pitches. So quarter inch by 20 threads per inch is a good size. I can choose blind, which means that when I choose the surface to put the hole in, I can blind how far I want my hole to go. Or like extrusion, I can choose through all, up to next, up to vertex, up to surface, and offset from surface. So maybe for argument's sake, I'll choose offset from this surface by a quarter inch. 
Now from here, I can add, if I wish, a cosmetic thread. And I'll show you what that is. Gives you a few other options that are probably not relevant here. And so when I click the green check, it says you must select a point on the face to locate the hole. Well, good for me, I just put a point on the face. So I'll choose the point that I sketched in. First, I must say 3D sketch. Choose a point and hit the green check. I can do as many points as I wish. And with that being said, SolidWorks automatically adds in a bottoming tapping hole. So if I go here, you can see exactly where the hole ends, quarter inch before the bottom face. You may notice that in the menu, we selected to show a cosmetic thread. And that means I don't have to cut threads into SolidWorks in order for them to show. That saves a lot of graphics and processing because threads can, can uh, take up a whole lot of system resources. But as you can also see, I don't see any cosmetic threads in that hole. So to get them to show, we're going to go to Options, just like we did in Video 1. This button will appear different in 2014, 15, and 16. And I'll go to Document Properties, and I'll say Detailing. And from here, I can choose Cosmetic Threads, and here's the key, Shaded Cosmetic Threads. And then, I'll head on down and select OK. And there is a Cosmetic Thread. The advantage to this is I can edit this sketch, and I can say I only want this to go to the halfway point of this line and that will automatically relocate the hole between this edge and the halfway mark and I simply rebuild the sketch and it remakes the hole. Now if I want to replicate this hole across the center of the part that's easy too. First things first when I extruded this I said blind I'll switch it to mid-plane and so now I have a plane that goes right through the center of the part. So all I have to do, instead of making two holes from the hole wizard and making two sketches, I simply say, just like we did in sketching, choose the mirror button. I can choose the front plane as the plane that intersects through the middle of the part. And I can reflect this hole across that plane and notice the threads carry over as well. If this sketch gets annoying to look at, I can simply right click and say hide. So now I've got two cosmetic holes. One is a mirror image. The mirror image can be very advantageous because if I wish to go edit the sketch, if I would have made two holes, I would have been uh, having to adjust the position of two different holes. By being able to adjust only one, the mirror automatically updates. And so I don't have to worry about the positions of other holes. Likewise, I can add a linear pattern of features just like we did a linear pattern in a sketch. I can choose this line to specify a direction and I can choose these features and add uh, cosmetic threads all the way down just like we had done before. Notice I haven't measured very much and so these holes at the end didn't turn out very well. However, you can see that I have a series of cosmetic holes. Likewise, to get rid of this, I can simply delete the linear pattern. How about one more example of something else we can do in SolidWorks? I can go ahead and create a sketch on the front plane.
I'll put a point at the end of the line and I'll make it two inches. From here, I can go to Hole Wizard, like we've done before. This time I'll choose uh, another straight tap. And bottoming tap is fine. Maybe I want to choose something a little bigger. I'll go with a three quarter inch hole. This time I'll just say through all. And I'll go into my 3D sketch and choose the point that I have sketched out. And there's my hole. I will again add under detailing shaded cosmetic threads so you can see the threads that were cut. That can be a useful feature in knowing which holes have threads and which holes do not. And then what I can also do is add a circular pattern. And in that case, under direction, I can just choose anything that's circular. And I can add however many holes that I would like, perhaps a seven tapped holes. So it's an easy way to add holes without needing to sketch a lot. And you can see that that circular pattern works almost exactly the same way as in a sketch. So, to go over what we learned, we'll do a fillet, and I can make that a quarter inch fillet if I'd like. And then I can add in a chamfer on the other side, because I can. So between fillets, chamfers, holes, linear, and circular patterns, you've seen some good examples on how to use these things to make your modeling easier. I'll see you in the next video.